Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Logic Medico. Today is a very interesting topic that is auscultation of the chest area for the heart sounds. Where we should auscultate and why. So let's see this in detail. Before going into that, if you are new to my channel, kindly subscribe to my channel in the below description as well as in the comment section, it will be there. And like this video, kindly watch the full video and then give a like. Okay. Let's start with the video. So, auscultation of the chest, especially the cardiovascular system. Here we are doing with only the cardiac area. The reason why we are auscultating and why exactly these areas, these objectives, I will cover in this video. Okay, let's start with this. So, this is a chest area. <coughs> in the chest area, in the midline, there is a sternum. On either side, there will be ribs. Okay. But down the sternum, if you roll your fingers in your chest, you will find one transverse elevation. It is called the angle of Lewis or the sternal angle. That is the attachment of the second coastal cartilage or the second rib. Okay, second coastal cartilage. Just below that second coastal cartilage, on the right parasternal area, second intercostal space, right parasternal area, that is the first area which I will describe and that is called as aortic area. So, in this area you will see the valve in the ascending aorta closing you will hear that sound much better okay kindly note this area is called the aortic area area number one it is right parasternal second intercostal space similar area on the left side that is left parasternal second intercostal space that is the second area of auscultation is called the pulmonary area here you in this area you will hear the closure of the pulmonary valves much clearly okay we'll see the details why we are able to hear much clearly for time being you remember the area right parasternal second intercostal space is aortic area left parasternal second intercostal space is pulmonary area then this area the lowermost part of the sternum is called the xiphoid process between the body and xiphoid process is called xiphi sternal junction or the xiphi sternal joint at that area if you auscultate you will hear the closure of tricuspid valve much clearly therefore it's called the tricuspid area so it is the lowermost part of the sternum in the midline okay so it's called the tricuspid area the next last but not the least area in the midclavicular line in the midclavicular line just below the nipple nipple is not a constant position so we will have to take in fifth intercostal space so in the midclavicular line just within the midclavicular line in the fifth intercostal space, how do you get to the fifth intercostal space? I already told you here angle of Lewis or the sternal angle down the sternum that will be the second coastal cartilage. So, alternate fingers if you roll on second, then space third, then a space of third, fourth, space of fourth, then fifth rib, ribs are oblique, then fifth intercostal space you will get it. Okay, so this fifth intercostal space just within the mid clavicular line will be the bicuspid area or the mitral area in this area you can hear the closure of the bicuspid valves between the left chamber of the heart much clearly so these are the four areas why these areas to understand this you have to know what are the position of the valves within the heart so to understand why aortic area is right parasternal second intercostal space and pulmonary area is left parasternal second intercostal space and tricuspid area is xiphi sternal junction and bicuspid or mitral area is fifth intercostal space just within the mid clavicular mid clavicular line so let's see this here is a human heart okay this is a human heart just written like this like cup shape there will be four chambers for the human heart the two atria above the right atrium and the left atrium the two ventricles below right ventricle and left ventricle of course there is a wall separating the atria it's called the interatrial septa and the wall separating the two ventricles is called interventricular septa. There is an orifice between the right atrium and right ventricle. It's called the AV orifice, right atrioventricular orifice. AV means atrioventricular. Similarly, on the left side, left atrioventricular orifice. From the right ventricle, great blood vessels will begin from the right ventricle and left ventricle and ascend upwards, not shown in this diagram for convenience. Okay. So I just now told you between the right chambers of the heart, there will be right AV orifice that is guarded by three valves anterior posterior and septal leaflets three leaflets are there that's why it's called tricuspid valve 
between the left chambers, left atrium and left ventricle, there will be two valves guarding the left AV orifice. So when there are two, we call it as bi, bicuspid valve. So this is called tricuspid because there are three cusps, C -U -S -C -U -S -P, cusps, plural. Okay. Here there are two leaflets or two cusps, therefore it's called bicuspid. Bi means two, tri means three. So simply we can call this as a AV valves or atrioventricular valves. Why? Because it is between the atrium and ventricle. Together, if I want to tell, I will call it as atrioventricular valves. If I want to be more specific, I call it as tricuspid valve and here on the left side as bicuspid valve. So together, it is called as atrioventricular valves. It is there in the junction between atria and ventricles. Okay. So the closure of this, whenever you open one door and try to close one door, Okay, open with force and close with force. What produces the sound? Opening or closure? Just think about it. You have to open with force and you have to close with force. Okay. You thought about it? If you have guessed, the closure produces more sound, then you have told the correct answer. The closure of these AV valves will produce one sound. It's called like this. It's called LUB. L-U-B-B -B, actually. LUB if you pronounce it's good enough see the closure of these valves after the ventricles get filled up the pressure in the ventricles will be higher than that of the atria then the both the valves the right side and the left side AV valves will close the right side valve are three in number tricuspid valve the left side are two in number bicuspid valve they close together okay and it produces one sound called as lub this is the first heart sound so what is first heart sound closure of the atrioventricular valves produces a sound called as lub and that is called as first heart sound. So where do you hear the first heart sound much clearly? It is near the Ziffy sternal junction for the tricuspid valve because imagine this this is there now. So this is sternum okay here. Here you will hear clearly. Why means? This sound is heard better over here. Okay this is the right side now. The left side you will hear in the fifth intercostal space just within the mid clavicular line. Because bicuspid valve is closer to that region. As simple as that. Okay. I hope you understood why the lub sounds are much clearly heard in tricuspid and bicuspid area. Next, coming to the ventricle and great arteries. There is one ventricle, right ventricle. And the great artery on the right side is called the pulmonary trunk. Okay. And there is one ventricle on the left side. It is called the left ventricle. And the great artery here is called the ascending iota. If you tell iota, it is good enough. What I mean. Here is a pulmonary artery, here is a iota. Within this, there will be three three valves. Okay. We will don't call it as uh, tricuspid valve here. We call it as because each valve is like a half moon, we call it as semilunar valve. Together, both these valves, each of these valves is like half moon, okay, shaped. So we call it as semilunar valves. The semilunar valves of the iota are called as iotic valve. The semilunar valves of the pulmonary trunk is called as pulmonary valves. That is more specific. So what are these valves? These are semilunar valves. They are present in the junction between the ventricles and the great blood vessels. The ventricles are right ventricle and left ventricle. The great blood great arteries are pulmonary trunk and iota, ascending iota. These are called semilunar valves because each of the valve is shaped like a half moon. The semilunar valve of the iota is called iotic valve and the semilunar valve of the pulmonary trunk is called as pulmonary valve. The closure of these semilunar valves, the closure of these semilunar valves will produce one sound, it is called as a dub. So, when these valves close, you will hear the sound much better over here in the upper end of the sternum. If this is a sternum, here close to the second intercostal space. When these valves close, see, the sound wave is going like this. Huh? For the aortic valve, it will be there in the, see, clearly you can see, it will be there in the right parasternal second intercostal space. Pulmonary, can you see pulmonary artery how it's going? It's crisscrossing one another. You may expect uh, the pulmonary uh, sound, the dub sound to be heard more on the right side because these arteries will cross one another like a figure of X. Okay. So, the aortic valve closure, semilunar valve closure will be heard much better on the right side. Right second intercostal space parasternal area while the pulmonary valve closure will better heard on the left side. Left parasternal second intercostal space because the arteries will crisscross one another 
which are beginning from the ventricles of the heart. So the closure of this semilunar valves produces a second heart sound. It is also called as S2. I hope you understood the S1 and S2 clearly. S1 is due to closure of AV valves, atrioventricular valves. S2 is due to the closure of semilunar valves. Okay. Come to the S3. So what is this S3? Is it present in every individual? No. Okay. So this is a third heart sound. S3 means third heart sound. It occurs early in the diastole. It is caused by sudden deceleration of the blood flow into the left ventricle from the left vent atrium. So from the left atrium to the left ventricle there will be blood flow. It is there in every individual. Blood flow is there. But we can't hear the sound in every individual. Only in some lean individual, really thin individual and athletes we can hear this sound. Also in some elderly who has got congestive cardiac failure, it's an abnormal sound because there is increased flow of blood. There is more time because heart is failing. So there will be S3 sound. Okay. So S3 is a sound of blood flowing from left atrium towards the left ventricle. That is called the third heart sound. Okay. So there is something called as S4. That is fourth heart sound as well. So is it normally heard? No. It is not normally heard. But it is present due to physiological phenomenon. So last few drops of the blood from the atria will reach the ventricle. Due to the contraction of atria, last few drops are forced through the AV valves that produces the fourth heart sound. When all these heart sounds are there together, it will hear like this. Can you observe? It's like galloping of a horse, no? Horse gallop it is heard. Therefore, it is also called as atrial gallop. Okay. So, this is due to the atrial contractions. The last few drops of blood in the atria is pumped into the ventricles, corresponding ventricles through the AV valves. Okay. So, this forceful contraction, the blood will strike the ventricle and therefore produces this sound called as S4. In summary, we will concentrate only on S1 and S2 which is heard in every individual. But S1 is due to closure of atrioventricular valves. S2 is due to the closure of semilunar valves. So the closure of atrioventricular valve produces a sound called as lub. The closure of semilunar valve produces a sound called as dub. I repeat one more time. S1 or the first start sound is due to the closure of atrioventricular valves. And the sound produces like this lub. Whereas S2 is a sound produced due to closure of semilunar valves. The sound produced is like this dub. So, lub, dub, lub, dub, S1, S2, S1, S2, like that it will be there. Okay. So, why these areas? We will see that once again in summary. So, S1, S1 is heard in these two areas, area number 3 and 4 marked here. S2 is heard in these two areas, area number 1 and 2. So, what is the aortic area? Iota means we are concentrating on semilunar valves. The aortic area is right parasternal second intercostal space. Sir, why is this aortic area? See, Baba, because the aorta goes like this from the left ventricle. This is the left side of the body, okay? Left ventricle, the aorta goes like this, okay? Then it arches like this. So, you will hear in the right parasternal area, second intercostal space. It's very interesting. Then, the left parasternal area. Second intercostal space is called the pulmonary area. Sir, why is it called pulmonary area? Because the pulmonary trunk passes to this side from the right ventricle, which is here, from the right side. Okay, partly it will be right side. Okay, it's mainly retrosternal, but the trunk will pass like this. When it passes like this, the sound is heard better here. So the aortic valve are auscultated better in the aortic area because the dub sound is heard clearly. If any abnormality in the dub sound heard here means aortic valve there is some lesion or problem. Okay. Pulmonary valves, the dub sound heard due to pulmonary valve is clearly heard in the pulmonary area. Any problem in the dub sound in this left parasternal second intercostal space meaning there is some problem or lesion in the pulmonary valves. Okay. Similarly, the closure of the AV valve produces the first start sound. It's called lub. So if it is due to the closure of tricuspid valve, we'll hear it here, the lowermost part of the sternum at the zephysternal junction. It's called the tricuspid area. You'll usually hear lub. If any problem is there in the lub sound here, that means there is a problem in tricuspid valve. Okay. Similarly, 
here in the midclavicular line just within that in the fifth intercostal space I told you how to reach that here this area is called the bicuspid area or the mitral area it's only two valves will be there between the left chambers of the heart, left atrium and left ventricle so the closure of that bicuspid valve you will hear it clearly the lub sound clearly here so if there is any problem in the lub sound over here that means there is a problem in the bicuspid valve okay that's why it's called this area so aortic area and pulmonary area you are auscultating for dub sound and tricuspid and mitral area you are auscultating for lub sound of course when you auscultate here you will hear both lub dub lub dub lub dub lub dub but you have to concentrate mainly on the lub okay lub dub lub dub lub dub you have to concentrate on the lub sound over here in these areas lower areas okay that indicates the closure of AV valve when you auscultate here of course lub dub lub dub is heard you have to concentrate on dub because now you have to concentrate on the second heart sound aortic area and pulmonary area you are concentrating on aortic and pulmonary valves which are nothing but semilunar valves so even when you are auscultating higher level in the chest you have to concentrate on second heart sound lub dub lub dub lub dub lub dub you have to concentrate on dub here okay I hope you liked this video and understood the concept behind the examination of the cardiovascular system and understood the first and second heart sound, the lub dub and you write the additional heart sounds that is S3 and S4 and the physiological phenomenon behind it. Kindly like this video and share this video with your family and friends. And don't forget to press the thumbs up button. Give a like for this video. If you are not yet subscribed, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press the bell button to get the latest notification of the videos which I upload. Thank you once again for spending some time in learning.